Welcome to our discussion with the new superintendent of the Menominee Falls School District. He is David Munoz. David, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you for having I, me. I love the opportunity to sit down and get to know you a little bit. We know the basics of Mosinee School District. Let's start there and work backwards. So before coming to the falls, and welcome, we're so glad to have you here. Tell us where you were and what you were doing. I was superintendent in Mosinee School District for four years. Before that, for about 10 years, nine years and a bit, I was the high school principal at Menominee with an I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Menominee, Wisconsin, Menominee High School with an I, um, for a good number of years. It's where we raised our children. Um, and if you know where UW-Stout is, yeah. that's where Menominee High School is at. So it's very similar to Menominee Falls High School. Tell me say. about Mosinee. Tell me about that district for people that aren't familiar with that part of the state. Yeah, Mosinee is about a 400 square mile district mm -hmm. from Lake Dubay, if you know where Lake mm -hmm. Dubay is, yeah. all the way up to Rib Mountain, close to Rib Mountain. Um, so it's a, it's a huge... Uh, and then the city of Mosinee itself is a, is a, is a paper town. There's a mill town. Mm -hmm. uh, so wonderful people. Mm -hmm. um, very diverse in terms of numbers and types of uh, families that live there. Mm -hmm. From the Lake Dubay mansions to uh, Knowlton, Cronenwetter, the city, but then town of Mosinee, which stretches to Rip Mountain. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a nine mile recreation area. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with Wausau at all, that is um, it partially in Mosinee. Yeah. So we're, we're very proud of the school district, but also what we accomplished in four years before, during COVID and coming out of COVID. So what are the challenges when you're in a big geographic district? You know, here in Southeast Wisconsin, there are lots of students in some districts, but they're compact. Right. When you have big geography to cover, what are the challenges? Well, busing is, is substantial. So we've had some students on a bus for hour, well over an hour. Yeah. So yeah. one of the big challenges during the winter was making sure that I was timing when I was waking up mm -hmm. so that I could make sure to be out and checking the roads myself uh, because while I did talk to other, you know, superintendents, just like I will here, in a district that large, you're really dealing with some pretty specific, uh, just to that district situations, uh, when you're making safety calls. Yeah, you're right, because here, you know, you'll collaborate with districts that are literally maybe five miles from you, but up there, you're like your own weather system almost, right, if you have that much geography yeah. to cover. And the weather is very different south of Rib Mountain versus north, mm -hmm. surprisingly. Mm -hmm. So there's that, but also Lake Dubay and the way that that's a man-made lake, and there's a lot of spread of water um, that can affect certain things. So that, that was a substantial challenge, but one that I just ended up getting up earlier and certain, like the quick trip in Mosinee was used to seeing me at 345 <laughs> and the parents in there are like, is this a snow day? And I'm just getting my coffee. I'm you know, I have, certain, right. ro I have certain roads that I check out that way. Well, and no then, shortly. And then out the other way toward my house, cause I lived right in, in the city, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. at least for another week. Uh, so, you know, that was, that was culturally, people kind of understood where the tough areas were, and yeah. we just wanted to make sure to keep things safe for everybody. Here, when I was driving around the district, as I've been staying in hotels here until we get a, a place established, it's been very interesting how, you know, two districts over would still be in what's the equivalent of the district that I ran. That's amazing. So, yeah. like, I was driving out to Mequon, I'm like, okay, I'd still be in my <laughs> district. <laughs> With a way to go yet. <laughs> right. Uh, we're talking to David Munoz. I want to ask you about your time as an administrator before becoming a superintendent. Mm -hmm. Your time as a principal, as an associate principal, what were some of the lessons you took away from being the guy in charge of a building before being in charge of a district? Yeah, what I found in, in terms of running a building, it was looking at, you know, always the students. My relationships with the students and the parents and the staff were always primary to, to what I had going on. and. It's, it's been that way here as well. I met a family yesterday um, uh, with our communications director just uh, as they were signing up. They were brand new to the school district of Menominee Falls. And it was really fun to meet them because they kind of recognized me from some of the social media things. Yeah. And they were, they were kind of excited and like, oh, you're talking to us. And I'm like, well, I talk to everybody. And, <laughs> and I've already told the, the administrators that I'm in a superintendent actually the same way that I was a principal. So I'm very active in the buildings. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll regularly be in the buildings at the start of the day during lunch. That's just very common for me because it's a good way to understand 
you know, that pulse on the buildings, right. which, you know, with almost with almost 20 years in the principalship, not quite, 15, whatever mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. you know, I have a, a good amount of years, mm -hmm. you know, running buildings in different parts of the state. Um, you want to be connected to students. You want to be connected to staff. You want to be connected to parents. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that, in my estimation, is in the buildings. To touch, but, to touch that ever as often as you can. You know, not just during school, but for example, mm -hmm. my first day here, actually the day before my first day, I was invited out to, hey, the football team has got a contact day. Mm -hmm. So I went out there on a Sunday night, a couple Sundays ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm out on the field and I met, you know, a bunch of juniors, I think it was. And I think I met most of the coaches and a lot of parents uh, that were there. And that was just fun. And I'm going to do a lot of that. That's very common for me, not just sporting events, but um, I've been invited to some events at the auditorium just with me not quite living here yet once I am. Yeah. Those things are very exciting for my wife and I to be part of. Concerts and plays. But and exactly. To also be have that opportunity to talk to parents mm -hmm. and, you know, get them to know me a little bit like, like you are right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me about your time in the classroom. Why, why did you decide to get into education and talk about uh, David Munoz as a young teacher and coach? Right. I was a businessman before I was a teacher, so I have two bachelor's degrees. So Lawrence University and my teaching degree was from Lakeland College. Mm -hmm. I think they call it Lakeland University now. Up near Sheboygan? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I did my student teaching in Elkhart Lake. Mm -hmm. And the reason for coming back to teaching, it was actually initially it was coaching. You know, I, I was this wrestler in high school and in college, and I had some successes, and I, I really thought I could make a difference mm -hmm. with students um, coaching. And so that's how it started. So I was a coach in college at Lakeland mm -hmm. before I ever taught a day. At, wow. In, yeah. So your passion for coaching really yeah, kind very, of went hand in hand. Yeah, it kind of started things out. So, so I was a college coach at Lakeland College. I restarted their or helped build up and recruit students for, for Lakeland College. Mm -hmm. So after that period of time, they, they told me, they gave me this stipend after I left my, mm -hmm. my initial career in business and said, you can have as many classes as you want in education. <laughs> well, to somebody who <laughs> likes studying, I just <laughs> took as many classes as yeah, I wanted. let's go. Got my second degree. So um, that's what led me to teaching in Manitowoc. So Elkhart Lake mm -hmm. is where that racetrack is. Mm -hmm. and. Manitowoc's not that far away, so yeah. I met some, some great educators there, and that's where I met my wife. So I was hired there, I met my wife my first year teaching. There was 50-some first-year teachers that year. Wow. I know. That's a lot. I know. Several marriages out of there. Wow, that's kind of cool. Including ours. So, uh, and we have three wonderful children, uh, one born in Manitowoc. Mm -hmm. But, um, so we were excited about that. So yeah, coaching, I kind of came into it. Usually you don't start coaching mm -hmm. in college first. Yeah, yeah. And then come to teaching. So I was a middle school and a high school teacher. So I taught middle school seventh grade mm -hmm. and then up at the high school for the remainder of the day. So after that, I just was full-time high school for the rest of my time in Manitowoc. So I coached football as a head wrestling coach there. So that's mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you know, I said, okay, yep, I can coach high school because I just coached college you know, wrestling. And that was a great, we had a great run. Um, also coached football there and had a lot of fun with that, but also had a, a good experience in my initial teaching. I uh, had some wonderful teachers around me that were able that could to- mentor you. And yeah, they were able to talk to me uh, mm -hmm. and, and help me through, mm -hmm. you know, hey, try this lesson. Did you think about this? Did you think about that? And I think that's a wonderful thing about education. And I was able to have that in a, in a large high school right on Lake Michigan. That's pretty cool, yeah. especially during the summer. It, it, it <laughs> actually, any time of the day of the year. Beautiful. At about twelve fifteen, it's Lake mm -hmm. Effect on Lake mm -hmm. Michigan. So if you open the window and it's a hundred degrees out, it's fifty degrees in that room. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, third floor Lincoln High School, Manitowoc Lincoln. So the car wow. ferry is yeah, in yeah. eyesight of Lincoln yeah. High School, yeah. and it's still there. It's I've taken that ferry a couple yep. times. It's a cool way to get across to Michigan. Yep, and there's a hill up there, and yeah. that's where the high school sits. Yeah, the Badger, I think, is the, that's is that right. the ferry, right? That's right. Uh, tell me about your wife. You've mentioned your wife. Yeah. I know she's a big influence in the man that you are today. Tell me about your wife. Uh, she's an amazing woman. She's uh, the absolute love of my life. I, I married up and well <laughs> uh, with her. Um, she's been here a couple nights ago. She was here. She met a few staff, but she's closing up the house. Yeah. Um, she was a teacher before I was, 
So she's been a teacher longer than I was, and we met in Manitowoc, and um, we haven't looked back. We have married 23 plus years. Oh, congratulations. Um, we have three children, all grown. <laughs> One's going to be a student teacher in Fond du Lac. Oh, wow. Right. So right up the road. That's yeah. where I was born. And following you in your, in your wife's footsteps. Yeah, he is. He's in social studies, which is what I taught, oh, which cool. is kind of fun. He's coaching football. Oh, wow. So he's, uh, but he's not short like me. I, <laughs> the picture is over there. He's, they like to put me in the middle. <laughs> they have my wife's side of the family. He's like 6'2". And yeah. yeah. Built so, like a football guy. Yeah. And so is my other son. So... Uh, so in our second son, he was born in Kenosha, mm -hmm. so he enlisted in the Army, came back to do ROTC, so he's at Whitewater. He's excited. He says, Dad, this is an hour and a half closer than, you know, when you're in college. That's a great you, school, You too. drive home. He loves it. Loves yeah. Whitewater. Loves the ROTC program there. Uh, he's in the Badger Battalion. Is the uh, service maybe in his future? Does he know? Oh, absolutely. He's already been through boot camp, so he kind of did it yeah, a little yeah, different. So yeah, he's already... An early start. Yeah, he did. At 17, he enlisted. So very proud of all of our children, including Zach. Um, he actually sh uh, is going to Fort Hood in a week. Wow, he'll be down in Texas, huh? Yep, he'll be at Hood. Hot time um, of year to be down in Fort he Hood. Is. He is. He's shadowing a second lieutenant as part oh. of his, um, his, his uh, ROTC mm -hmm. course. And our daughter is going to St. Norbert. Oh, that's a pretty yeah. school up yep. in Pier. She starts in like 21 days, I think wow. she told me last the night. the countdown is on. Yeah, I know, 21, really, okay, <laughs> great. So, yeah, my wife, our children, um, and we're all about our church, we're all about our faith. Uh, we're very active in um, our service organizations, mm -hmm. um, not just the two of us, but also our children. Um, it's a big part of who we are. So. My wife is an amazing person, and she is the bedrock of things, and, and is herself a wonderful edu educator even to this day. Yeah. So. What will be your priorities here in the falls? You come into this district, and what would you like to focus on initially? Well, initially, uh, safety, um, always, in the 21st century. Yeah. I think um, that's something that you would ask about my time in the principalship. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of things, and safety has to be first. Um, not just for students, but for staff. And um, I've had some wonderful initial meetings with the chief of police um, already, and we're going to meet again next week, um, uh, along with uh, all the SROs, school resource yeah. officers for the district. Yeah. So I think we have a good initial plan, some minor changes, enhancements, and improvements going forward. Uh, but we'll wait for that meeting and maybe roll that out in a next yeah in a next presentation. But we're excited about that, so safety would be really big. Learning for all, um, you know, that's obviously what we do. Mm -hmm. um, my big perspective, big ideas about education is higher order thinking, construction of knowledge in the Valley Beyond School of Material being taught. That if somebody, when I'm, I've observed hundreds and hundreds of classrooms, you know, higher order thinking, construction of knowledge, Valley Beyond School of Material being taught. But then also looking being even more specific mm -hmm. with like teachers, for example, mm -hmm. and they would say the same thing, I'm certain. I've met several, and I have another listening session with teachers today at two o'clock, that um, you know, you wanna answer four questions all the time as a teacher. One, what do you want the students mm -hmm. to know? Like, uh, like what, are, what are the objectives? Mm -hmm. um, how do you know that they know it? Um, those are the assessments. What do you do when they don't get it? Yeah. What, what do you do? Yeah. And that's okay to ask, yeah. just have a plan. But also, what do you do if they already know it? Yeah. You know, and yeah. enrichments and enhancements and these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the big picture view of education for mm -hmm. me, but starting with safety, but then getting to learning for all with higher order thinking, construction of knowledge, value beyond school, the material being taught, but then answering those four core questions. What do we want those kids to know? Or what do we want our students to know and learn? Mm -hmm. How do we know that they know it? Assessments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we do if they struggle? And that's okay mm -hmm, if they do. Mm -hmm. But, but we got to we 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 have a plan to get them from here to here. But also, what do we do if they're not struggling and they already know it? So How do we keep them engaged? Right. How do we keep them so, challenged? Exactly. And that's, that's, that's what I'd like to... And, and honestly, I've talked to a lot of teachers that have already expressed that before I've mm -hmm. you know, said a word. So mm -hmm. I've met some wonderful educators here. Um, like I've talked for an hour with two, uh, one high school teacher and one elementary teacher, over an hour actually, at our last listening session to the yeah. point where 
all right, I had another meeting and I saw people <laughs> in the, and, they, and they were like, oh yeah, it, it, yeah, it, was, just, yeah. it was a healthy conversation. One, the high school about the academies, yep. the academy structure here uh, in Menominee Falls. I did read about it, I was aware of it. We yeah. had a very passionate educator and we were having a really good discourse mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, a physical education teacher who had been in the district a long time and we were able to have connection because my wife's a physical education teacher and taught health and adapted physical education. Yeah. So, so you had that connection. We had a, you know, I've been speaking that language for 20 some, <laughs> 20 some years, you know, from, a, you know, an elementary, uh, they call them elementary specials. Yeah. You know, when you have, you know, the non-classroom, but still, you know, core mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. learning. I want to ask you about continuous improvement. Yes. It's been an important principle here in our district, national, international recognition throughout the years with right. others coming to view the process here. How important is it that continuous improvement and those procedures in some form continue in the district? Yeah, continuous improvement is, is a big part of what I do. Um, I've already talked about continuous improvement plans. In education, we always have acronyms. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know, one of them is SIPs. So one of the first question I had is, all right, where's everybody's SIPs? And let's start talking about our continuous improvement <laughs> plans. Um, but Amy, the, our, our curriculum and instruction director, we've had initial conversations about that as recently as yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, the Studer Group is still actively involved. Yep. We still have a contract with the Studer Group. Yep. Um, so I have some calls out to them in order to make sure that we reconnect um, and continue that valuable work. Uh, because it is valuable work to understand that you're never you're never really in a great organization going to say that we have everything answered and things are perfect. Yep. We're done. You know, you're going to be going, yep. okay, you're going to be answering those four questions. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's going to be people that you're, you're going to be teaching, you have objectives and lessons and assessments. They're going to get it and be at a high level. But there's going to be somebody who struggles or there's going to be students who struggle or have challenges or yeah. there's an IEP situation or whatever it is. And there's and, new people coming into the district. And, there's new families. You have new instructors. Yeah, exactly. So what's the, what's the loop mm -hmm. with making mm -hmm. sure that we're continually answering those questions, being aware of them, uh, but moving uh, the district forward like it has been in a very successful yeah. way? Well, welcome to the district. Thank we're you. We're glad that you're here. I Thank know you're you. going to be really busy getting your feet under you and implementing the things you want to do. It's good to have you here. It's been a great start. I'm John Mercure. He is David Munoz. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.